just for you and just for you. Hey guys, it's Ken from KBD Productions TV. Welcome back to another Ken Domic Food Review, just for you. I've got Moy with me. Hi, how you doing? And we are downtown Toronto at a smokes poutineery location at Young and Eglinton. And one of the main reasons I'm down here is because you guys always ask me, what is poutine or how do you make it? So I asked Moy here to help me out, show you guys how to make a poutine. You ready? Ready, bud. Let's do this. All right, let's go in. All right, Moy, so what are the ingredients of a poutine? Well, the ingredients of a basic poutine are French fries, cheese curds, and gravy. Okay, so uh, what is the process of the French fry? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna start with something that we call blanching, signature to our store. So if you come with me this way, and I'll show you how we do it. Excellent, let's go. Fantastic. All right, so you see we got our potatoes right here that come from our own fields in Prince Edward Island. And they are, as you can see, sealed, ready to go, especially for us. And these bags are actually made for smoke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, only for smoked poutineery. I used to think that this was just a display. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually the bags are for our franchise, for our stores, only us, nobody else. Always make sure that when you're blanching, you blanch with cold water. You do not do it with hot water. Okay, why? Well, do you know the reason why? Or Well, actually, the cold water helps to re remove the starch. Okay. Yeah, because if you actually have hot water, it sort of like slow cook them. Okay. You know, if you, know, if you get what I mean? So the cold water does help not cook the potatoes and they stay extra crisp like that. And we do one bag at a time? One bag at a time. Taking our little cutter right here. We're just take them one by one. Take your sweet time. You can actually start seeing the one is changing a little bit of color, turning almost milkish. That's all the sun right there from the potato. How long do you soak them for? Well, usually we don't we wanna we don't wanna soak them for too long because at the same time they will get soggy. So you just wanna like go in there immediately, mix them up real good with the cold water. There we go. So is this basically a cold water wash? It's a cold water wash, which is gonna be very good for your fries. And then you wanna take this little back basket right here and make sure that you get all the water out. Put them in this big basket here. All right, so now that you've cut all the french fries, you wash them, what's the next step? The next step is to actually blanch them, and we're gonna blanch them in our fry station right there. Okay. Here I got my four fries. Usually we divide them. Two would be on for blanching, and two would be on for frying. But on a busy night, smoke does get a lot busy, so when I have my party going on up in here, my customers are here, I have all four going at the same time. Wow. All righty, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see. It kind of works out. Look at that. Way. That works perfect. I know, right? Genius. <laughs> Only at smokes. <laughs> All right. So we're going to fill them up, and we don't want to get them filled up so high. So we want to go like to a little like oh, about 80% full of it. Right. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to fill up the other one too. We usually have this little alarm right here. As uh, you can see, set at four and a half minutes. Oh, good. So usually you'd want to keep it right here. We chew as close as you can. Your baby's down, take your fiber, and you're good to go while you wait. And this is where you listen to like really good music at this point in time. Absolutely, you listen to really good music, or you talk to your fellow staff, or you attend to the customers who will always be around. Once again, why do we blanch? Okay, so we usually we blanch to make sure that our fries are of a very high quality. We, we are very particular about our quality of fries here at Smokes. So when you do blanch them and then you come and fry them later, you get that nice consistency where it's crisp on the outside and very soft and moist on the inside. Perfect, I'm telling you. Okay. Now as you actually keep on blanching here, I prefer to shake them a little bit so they don't get stuck on the little metal basket. And then when taking them out, it will actually be easier that way. So around like midway through, give them a real quick shake. Now that the fries are blanched, what do we do? Well, after now that they're blanched, we have to put them in a container and take them to our refrigerator. 
Okay. But before we take them to the refrigerator, they have to go on our rack and cool down in room temperature. Okay, because if we put them in the fridge right now, it will heat up the fridge, right? It will heat up the fridge, plus the condensation, you know, they'll spill Nasty. faster. It's a bad situation. They think about everything here, don't they? Yeah, we do. All right, I got my little metal rack right here that always stays in my kitchen. You see, I feel right there, clean, oil-free. Nice. Only it smokes with Tina Reed. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to get it right here at an angle, you know everybody does it their own way, I usually like doing it over there. So you have your fries right there, my good sir, shake them up a little bit. We're just going to separate them right here so they don't get clumped up. And you're going to put them up here where they will stay and cool down for five to 10 minutes, depending on the temperature. So over here, we have two refrigerators. We have one over here, and we have another one at the back. We're gonna show them all to you. But this one has the ready-to-go fries right there. Nice. These have been blanched, and they have dates on them. As you can see, these are ready to go as of right now. They've been nice and chilled. They're gonna give you the most delicious fries you've ever had. All right, Moy, what is the next step in a poutine? Okay, the next step in a poutine would be our very own cheese curds. Nice. And, oh, yeah. And why do we use white cheese curds over the yellow or well, orange? The, well, the white ones actually do look good, and these ones are made in Montreal. They are special. Like, to say special is the least. They are fantastic. They have a nice squeak to them, fresh. And these are approved. Let me grab by one. the purists of Montreal. All right. Yeah, they have approved this. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Mmm. Mm. We've done the french fries, the cheese curds, what is last? Last would be what goes on top, the gravy. And what kind of gravies do you have? Well, brother, we have three kinds of gravy over here. Okay. We have the signature gravy that is chicken-based with a hint of rosemary. Delicious. Which is like your number one seller. That's our number one seller right there. Okay. That's our baby. That's, that's what gets us going all day. Awesome. All right, now. And then we also have our peppercorn gravy, which is beef-based. And it's okay. got a touch of the peppercorn, so it's a bit spicy. Yeah, it's a bit hot, eh? Yeah. Not, not Hot, I would say it's spicy. Okay. It has a robust taste. A robust, spicy taste of without course. burning your mouth. Exactly. Right. All right. And last, we have our vegetarian gravy. Awesome. And our vegetarian gravy actually has mushrooms and garlic with it. Simply divine. And everything pretty much is vegetarian because you don't cook anything else in these fryers but the French fries. Only the French fries. So that's only vegetarian only there. Only French fries. And then your gravy is vegetarian, so all you vegetarians out there who want a good poutine, come here. And I guess you have to also like cheese, so. And also, we do have our vegan customers who come in. They would opt out of the cheese curds, but they still enjoy the gravy. Awesome, I didn't know that. Of course, only at Smokes. Let's make a poutine, buddy. Why not? The first step in making our poutine is? You have to fry your fries now. Let's your do it. fries. So how long do we cook these fries for? Okay, now this usually would go by eye, really, because you know what? As the seasons change, so does the consistency, you know, the acidity in the potatoes and whatnot. So there are times where it will take a little bit longer to fry the fries, and there are times where it will take shorter as the seasons change, depending on when they were harvested. It ranged from a good five minutes to a good seven minutes max. All right, now, as you can see, they're almost ready. They're starting to get that nice golden look on them, and yeah, you can even feel. You can feel them wrapping on that little metal basket right there. It tastes good, nice and crispy, nice and crispy, but the magic is soft and moist on the inside. So right now, our fries are good, as you can see, nice and crispy, nice golden brown right there. Look at that. Yummy. Golden goodness right there. So you just want to tip it over, make sure that all the oil drains out. Now, this doesn't mean that all the oil has drained out, so that's why we're gonna put them right here. What kind of salt is that? This is a cold, coarse kosher salt. Okay. Yeah, it gives it that nice little zing that goes with it. Sure. And you just put a pinch on it. Oh, yeah, that's a little pinch, not much. Oh, that's a little paper right there. As you can see, we have our fries, not oily at all, awesome. nice and dry. You take one of our little boxes here. There, look at that. Little bit. Nice helping right there. And now comes the good part. Cheese curds. Cheese curds. And I noticed that there's two, uh, another one underneath. What's that for? Well, this one is supposed to keep our cheese curds nice and cool because if you get them at room temperature, they uh. will get, they'll melt easily. Now you see, the funny thing is, people want the cheese curds to melt, 
it's really not supposed to. Okay. You're supposed to get that nice, squeaky taste when you bite into the curd with the gravy and the crisp, moist fries. That's the look you're going for. That's what you're going for when you have a proper poutine. So you get right there. Oh boy. A nice helping right there. We're gonna go traditional right now with our signature gravy, chicken the steak. Signature gravy, that's oh, right. Oh yes, sir. So you just wanna get it right there. And it's like a, a hint of rosemary you, you of said course, earlier? It's just a hint of rosemary right there. Let's just put a little bit of extra gravy. Here nice. Go. Nice and coated. And my good man, there you go. Awesome. Your traditional poutine from Smoke's Poutinery. Check it out, people. And that's how you make a poutine. And that's how you make a poutine. And smokes. Poutinery. Let's go have some food. Why not? Let's go now. Okay, Moy's finished cooking up our poutines. Uh, one thing, uh, would you put ketchup on that or is that like a taboo? Well, to me personally, as a poutine maker, it's a taboo. It okay. takes off from the poutine. No ketchup. No ketchup. But you can still have it if you I, want as a choice. But for me, no ketchup. And this is the regular size? They have three sizes? Yes, it comes in three sizes, especially our traditional. It comes in a snack size, meal size, and in a wild size. Right. So depending on how hungry you are. Yep, go ahead. All right. Life is a while. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, brother. Let's do it. Let's do this. Haven't had a poutine in a while. Mm. And when you do have a poutine after a while, it's got to be a smoked poutine, right? Poutine. Mmm. Rich goodness right there. I love the gravy. Delicious. You can't get that anywhere, right? You cannot get this anywhere. It's only made especially for us. And as you can see, even when you bite into the fries and the curds, it's squeaky. Still squeaky. How it holds its form. How it's come you got all the big curds? Yeah, hey, because I'm a big guy. <laughs> you gave me one of the smallest curds. I'm disappointed. No. Hi, world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna pull out one of those. There you guys go. So the, the cheese curd holds its form. It's not supposed to melt yes. fully. It's just not a little bit of melting. It's not supposed to melt fully. It's supposed to melt just a little bit. You can get the little pieces there that will melt, but you're supposed to get it nice and firm so you taste the goodness of a Montreal cheese curd. And when the, the gravy heats it up, there's a huge difference between when I had it cold mm -hmm. and now. Yes. Like it tastes like 10 times better uh, when it has the gravy on it than when I just realized that now because I, I don't usually have a cold cheese curd mm -hmm. before I have a poutine. But when you have a cold cheese curd and then you actually have one that's heated up by uh, gravy. Tastes real good, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much for having me down. At Pleasure the, having you here, bud. Smokes Poutinery. Uh, and I appreciate you making me a poutine and, and letting all my uh, fans and uh, viewers know how to finally make a poutine. Absolutely, it's a pleasure having you here and we hope to see you guys here at Smokes Poutinery. All right guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Ding, 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 ding. And we'll see you next time on another Ken and Moy food review. Ken and Moy out. Boop. Are you ready, buddy? Ready, bud. All right. Let's go. One of the things you guys always ask me is blah. Okay, see, you gotta go. Perfect. Can you go? <laughs> That's what I said, I gotta go, I gotta go crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna set that again, alright? Of course. Okay, sure. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm messing him up all, all right. day long. Alright guys, if you like this video, food in my mouth. <laughs> abyss. Alright, so you just look and smile. Oh, I'm gonna smile. And we'll see you next time on another Ken Domic and Moy food review. Ken and Moy out. Oh, we gotta do that again. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing.